Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The preacher is a soldier of faith. He was tasked with eliminating the soldiers of the seven sins, and to this day he still knows that his task isn't over. The preacher has strength 3, perception 8, endurance 8, charisma 3, and intelligence of 2, agility 1, and luck at 4. Although not reliant on strength, this character won't let himself become too weak, and a strength 3 helps to represent this. Perception is set at 8. This is uncharacteristically high for one of my builds, but I wanted the preacher to be an incredible shot, who understands that firing one bullet which hits is better than a dozen which miss. Endurance is also at 8. The preacher is incredibly tough, not so much due to physical bulk, but his spiritual strength will keep him going no matter what. For this build, Charisma is at 3. Although he is used to speaking to crowds of people, the preacher has lost his human touch over the years, leading to him struggling to connect with others. Intelligence is only at 2. This isn't to say that he is stupid, but instead that his mind is solely focused on the task at hand and this blinds him to outside influences, and doesn't allow for his mind to grow. Agility is our dump stat. The Preacher has suffered many injuries over the years, and is now slow and lacks in advanced mobility. In terms of gameplay, this forces you to not rely on being fast or stealthy, and instead play to the strengths of the build. Last of all, Luck is sat at 4. This means that we won't be playing as a luck-based character specifically, but we will get the chance to use some of the early luck perks to our advantage. The essential perks of this build are Rifleman, Armorer, Lone Wanderer, and Sniper. Rifleman is our main damage perk. Rifles are probably the most versatile subcategory of weapons in the game, offering a great balance of power, range, and modding options. The added armor piercing effect from the Rifleman perk is also great with dealing with tougher enemies. Armourer is going to let us have a good base damage and energy resistance at all times. Without this perk, the character is a lot more squishy, and can be rapidly taken down by certain enemies. The Lone Wanderer perk is one of the most powerful in the game, and significantly boosts both for attack and defence, helping the preacher to truly be a strong character, capable of playing on the higher difficulties. Last and essential is Sniper. This will make the character a far superior sniper, increasing that accuracy for headshots, letting us steady a scope for longer, and knocking down enemies when we land a shot on them. This last part is most important of all, as it means that all of our shots have a chance to stagger enemies. The recommended perks of the build are Gun Nut, Bloody Mess, Scrounger, Life Giver, and Adamantium Skeleton. Gun Nut is the other modding perk for this build, and helps our weapons to be powerful enough to deal with any enemy. It's important that our guns are as powerful as they can be, but you may get lucky with weapon drops and end up not needing all the ranks of this perk, so see how things go as you play. Bloody Mess adds even more damage to the build, ensuring we can take out enemies at a rapid pace. Scrounger will keep us stocked up on ammo. We only will be using two types of ammo at the end of this build, and it's vitally important that we have enough of each to get us through any fight. Life Giver is a great perk for the purpose of survivability. The health regen is something which I personally love, and having it at level 20 is awesome for keeping you alive between fights. Last of the recommended perks is Adamantium Skeleton. Crippled limbs can lead to this character taking a lot of damage quickly, so we want to not have to worry about this if we don't have to. The role-playing perks I've included are Medic, Mysterious Stranger, Penetrator, and Refractor. Medic relates to the medical skills that the preacher learned from watching the Medic patch up soldiers. This perk is also just helpful for keeping us maxed out on health at all times. Mysterious Stranger is a perk that will incentivize using bats in difficult fights. In terms of roleplay, treat the Mysterious Stranger as a guardian angel, watching over the preacher and helping him in his journey. The Penetrator perk means that enemies can't escape us by hiding behind cover. This is here to signify just how powerful the preacher's guns are. His weapons pack a hell of a punch, and a wall won't stop them from killing someone. The final perk of this build is Refractor. More than anything, I put this perk in here simply because I don't know if I've ever used it before. It will boost our energy resistance, which will come in handy for some fights, especially against enemies such as Sims. Before he joined the army, the Preacher was actually a Preacher. He had been raised in a religious household, and his faith had always been strong. When he was conscripted into the army though, he didn't resist, 
allowing for events to take their own course. He rapidly gained an unusual reputation amongst the soldiers after his first fight. As a religious figure, many soldiers assumed he wouldn't even fire his gun, but to their immense surprise, he not only pulled the trigger, but every time he did, an enemy soldier fell down dead. After the fighting was over, he would then go over to every person who he had killed, kneel next to them, and bless them. His lack of a significant emotional response in any way to all of this led to everyone giving him a wide berth for the most part. Despite his reputation, his superiors decided to raise him through the ranks and eventually had him leading a squad of men. On one mission, his squad was ambushed by Chinese forces, and he offered himself as a trade for letting his men go. Despite his offer being accepted, one of his men rushed forwards and pulled him away, shielding him from enemy fire as they escaped the ambush. The man in question had been the medic of the squad. Unfortunately, the preacher had watched him closely enough in the past to have picked up a few tips on how to heal people, and was able to keep him alive long enough to get him back to base. This event left his squad at almost half strength, and the remaining members were all reassigned and he ended up before a group of officers who assigned him a new task. He was told about seven captains who had gone rogue, and who needed to be stopped before they did too much damage. Despite being an unusual request, he let things proceed on their own course. He was officially discharged from the army, as it is known that the captains are outside of where the army can reach them. Readjusting to civilian life comes easy to the preacher, but tracking the captains is surprisingly difficult. Despite being given a full briefing telling him all the information the army apparently had on them, it appeared like they had vanished. The occasional rumour was heard, but it never led to any hard evidence. In his time tracking the captains, the preacher ends up getting married and has a family. Although he doesn't stop searching for the rogue soldiers, he does slow down in his efforts as he devotes more time to family matters. He even begins to doubt that the Seven will ever be found. That is, until he comes home one day to an empty house. Walking through the building, he can feel fear in the air, and sees a trail of blood leading out the back door. Walking into the garden, he bears witness to the sight of his wife and child hanging from a neck from a tree, their bodies covered in cuts, and their skin pale and drained of all life. Cutting down the bodies, he falls to the ground next to them, tears flowing freely down his face, and feeling hatred for the first time in his life. After this, he starts to search harder than ever before for the captains, certain that they were responsible for this. He spends years clinging to every shred of evidence he can find on them, and eventually finds a lawyer who has also been independently researching them. Together, the two will continue their search, but to no avail. They will fall for each other, and even have a son together, but they will come no closer to learning who the Seven Captains truly are, or why they need to be stopped. Armageddon will stop their search for a time, but hundreds of years later, the Preacher is still convinced that the Seven are out there somewhere. The main faction for this build will be the Railroad. You'll want to join them in order to get access to Ballistic Weave, but you don't have to finish the game with them. I personally don't feel that finishing the game with any faction feels right when playing to this character, so I leave the choice up to you, but personally I would advise not finishing the main questline unless you really want to. As an additional faction, you may also wish to join the Children of Atom. This faction ties into the religious side of the build, but doesn't necessarily fit with the preacher as an individual. That being said, he sees the merit of faith, and will at the very least be accepting of the Children of Atom. The Preacher walks alone. He has lost everyone close to him, and no longer seeks out companionship, instead resigning himself to a solitary life with a singular purpose and focus. This build has two different weapons, Justice and a 50 caliber sniper rifle. Justice is our close quarters weapon, dealing out plenty of damage and also having a chance to stagger, an incredibly helpful effect for a shotgun to have. The 50 cal sniper gives us an incredibly strong long distance weapon, but is just really badass. I've always liked the idea of a sniper slash shotgun loadout, and it works really well within Fallout 4, when engagement distances have a lot of variety. The Preacher wears pasta vestments and a battered fedora. This offers a very unique aesthetic to the build that makes it stand out from any other that I have made. Both of these take ballistic weave, giving us strong resistances and ensuring we won't go down easy. In addition, we will also end up with an additional point in Charisma, Endurance, and Luck, due to the inherent bonuses from the clothing itself. The Preacher is an incredibly powerful build, providing you don't play on tilt. 
Accuracy matters with this character, as you need to be hitting your shots to take down foes at speed. If you miss with too many, you will find yourself overpowered before you know it. With the choice of weapons, you can start fights at a long range with your sniper, and then switch to the shotgun once your targets get too close for a scope. In terms of roleplaying, you will want to be searching the waste for any hint of the Seven Sins. In his heart, the Preacher knows that they are still out there somewhere, and that it won't be long before they reveal themselves. Rage, Sloth, Gluttony, Lust, Greed, Pride, and Envy. These are the true enemies he will eventually face. We see a deadly sin on every street corner, in every home, and we tolerate it. We tolerate it because it's common, it's trivial. We tolerate it morning, noon, and night. Well, not anymore. This build marks the beginning of the end for my weekly Fallout 4 builds. This is a series which started my channel on the path it is now, and I wanted to give it a fitting, temporary end. To this end, I will be releasing the Seven Sins as my next seven weekly Fallout 4 builds. Each of these have been adapted from a book I started writing a few years back, and these characters will be significantly different to the other Fallout builds of the past, each having a deep history surpassing anything that I will ever be able to convey in a YouTube video. But if I can even show a tenth of who each of them are, then I will be happy with what I have achieved. I want to thank all of you who have stuck with the channel for so long, and also reassure you that this is only going to be the ending series to the weekly Fallout 4 builds. I'm not going to turn my back on these builds forever after this series, but I will want to do any future ones at a more leisurely pace and focus on other content for the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope the next seven weeks live up to the hopes I have for them.